Good morning everyone. Welcome back to Monday's video here at Bearham Engines. Right, first of all guys, before we go any further, we've got John's little Austin 7 in here. So this, he has been in at the weekend, I think the same time as Isaac. Um, and here's obviously give it a lick of paint. So that looks to me like a massive Ferguson gray, but does look a lot more clean and fresh than it did before. He's got the crank in there and I think he came in at the weekend to get his new uprated camshaft in. So I think he said that you've got to grease thoroughly the center bearing, but he said it all went in fairly snugly. Um, quite nice, he's got it all timed up. So that thing now, you can see is all moving nicely. I do like these little Austins where they've got the, the roller bearing either side. It makes it lovely to turn. The problem is with this one, guys, originally, as you may well have know if you've watched a previous video, is down there you have a pinch bolt. Um, and what that does is basically it's a, a bolt going through the small end. So rather than the new stuff where it's got a um, no split and the pin just goes through and you've either got circlips either end or it's a shrink fit in the small end. Well, this one is a pinch bolt, so it acts like a, the shrink type. Um, but what happened is the pinch bolt actually broke. The pin come adrift, of course, there's no circlips either side and it dragged up against the bore and buggered the bore up. So um, obviously John has got new pistons at plus 40 um, and they're a fairly nice modern trick piston. So we've now got new pinch bolts and they've also got the circlips either side of the um, the pin so if the pinch bolt did break then the pin's not going to go anywhere and damage the bore so it's a belt and braces thing he's had all the big ends re-white metalled um, i think he's refaced all the followers and cleaned all that up obviously a fresh bore so that is all ready to go guys he's um i think he's just doing this at weekends the same as isaac is doing his subaru so looking forward to the next video on the other channel of that guys so what am i doing this morning this cosworth here you can see I've got the cylinder head on and the big old blower. I'll show you that when the engines turn up the other way. But what I'm doing first of all, guys, I've got the new oil pump, which I always take the top off the new oil pump, check, make sure there's no flashing in there, in the castings there, all turns nicely, prime it all up, put it back together. We've got the new gasket here with the pickup um, and the pickup is all on and cleaned. Now you can see here, I use an anaerobic sealer because this is a four wheel drive with the no gasket. Um, we've just put our seals in the either end. Um, Isaac's cleaned up all the sump. The baffle is all clean there. So I'm gonna put the baffle in the sump, get this on guys, and then I can turn it over and show you the little um, issue that we have with the big old reconditioned GT30 blower there. Um, that is done by Turbo Performance. And as you can see, He's an absolute whopper there. So this is gonna um, hopefully create good power, which is gonna be more than enough in a Mark I Escort, basically, isn't it? Right, so the little 1275, we have reassembled all this. All I've gotta do, as soon as I've done that Cosworth, is set up the timing. So this in here is a Piper cam with a Piper vernier pulley, as you can see on here. Very nice, um, nice fitting chain. Um, so what I've done, guys, is I've downloaded the, the specs of the cams for the Piper. So this has got two bits of information on that we need. It's a BP255 mild road or turbo cam here that you can see we've got. Uh, so first of all, we need the valve clearances, which is 12 thou on the in inlet and exhaust, which John has done. So you've got to do the valve clearances before you attempt to do the, um, the timing. And then the next bit of information we need is this one here. So we are looking at 108 on both the inlet and exhaust. Inlet is after TDC. So what that means is 108 degrees on the crankshaft, we should be at full lift after dead center um, on the inlet and the same on the exhaust, but before top dead center, okay? So that's what we need. Sometimes, like on the Cozies and that, you will have different specs for inlet and exhaust. You may have 108 on one, 110 on the other, but um, no, so they're the, they're the bits of info we need, guys. So I'll just get that Cozzy done, and then um, we can set that up, get the cover, front cover on, and this thing is all done. The sump and stroke gearbox is there, but we've only got to put that on with a couple of bolts just for transit purposes. 
um, and the same with the rocker cover. Everything's all balanced, so, um, so yeah. 1275 nearly going out the door, guys. All done, ideal. So, another crank balance today, and this is one that old Paul Dove has just brought in. Another one of the Alphas. So on the front end, it's about 20 out, which is um, not too bad. Not too much to come off of there. And on the rear, that is pretty similar, if not a little bit less. So I'm gonna get the angle grinder on that and uh, take some off where it needs it. And I'll, yeah, I'll show you how much I've had to take off. You can see there, I've just sort of ground a bit off on this area, which is at number nine on there. Let's spin that and see what we got. So that took that front end down to about 10, and the angle, sorry, is, I had that on the wrong setting. That is, it's take, taking it down about five. Stop that. So with these crank balances, we always start at this front end, get that in balance, then we move to the back end, and then we go back to the front end and put, put the front pulley on there. And then we go back over this end, flywheel on. So, there we go, is that front end down to zero now. Um, and quite often when you get the front to zero, the back end will sort itself out a little bit more. Um, in this case, that hasn't happened. <laughs> get that balanced. And then we'll go back and do the front pulley on the front end. So I've got the back end of the crank balance now. It's a little bit there, a couple of little bits here and there. Um, but yeah, that's all good now. So now I can go back, focus on the front end and get the front pulley back on there and then balance that. So you can see we've got the front pulley on there, which uh, I think is new, looks quite nice. Don't know whether Paul's just blasted it and it's come up well, but yeah, so we'll see how, see how bad that is. See so we're on the right hand side and it's gone up to about 25. It's not too bad. So what I do with these is obviously find the angle on there and everything. And then you can usually get a four mil drill in, in there or if you have to, you can take a bit out the back. But yeah, these aren't too big of an issue. Sometimes you get front pulleys where there's just nowhere you can drill. But yeah, these are all good. You can get a little drill in there. Stuff on the back there if you need to. So I'll get that balanced. Right, so I've got the front pulley balanced now. I know what you're gonna say. Bloody hell, that is a lot taken out of there. Well, the reason is, and I said this before, but because this front pulley is made of alley, you have to take more material out because aluminium is obviously a very light material. So if it was steel, I probably would have drilled half the amount of holes. But because it's alley, you have to take more out to get it in balance, if you, if you can understand what I mean. But yeah, so that's all balanced now. Um, now I can move on to the flywheel. I've got the flywheel on there and actually, Quite surprisingly, it isn't too bad at all. So we'll just drill a few holes in that, get that right, and then we can move on to the clutch. So there we go, that's the flywheel balance now. I'll just show you the holes that I've drilled. So all it was was this one here, and this little hole here as well. So that's all that flywheel needed, so that was pretty good. So, whilst the flywheel was good, the clutch is not so good. Um, so we're going to have to balance all that out. It's about 45, 50-ish. Might be a couple of holes in this one, but hopefully I won't make it look like Swiss cheese, as a lot of you have been saying. But That's the clutch plate, or the clutch cover balance now. You can see I've taken out these holes a little wider, and I've done these just there. I think I've got, yeah, just one little one there as well. So not too Swiss cheesy, but 
that one's all done. I can I can take that off now and uh, we'll let Paul know it's done. One last thing I will do is I'll just spin it up again and check it's in balance on both ends, which it usually is, but it's just a good thing to check. But yeah, that's that one done. So what we're doing here, my friend, is we've got the 1275. Yeah. And we're going to be setting the vernier pulley up on the right, okay. Piper cam. Yep. Sorry, it's not a Newman cam, although I am using the Newman cam's wheel here. <laughs> That's fine. Ken's right, watching. It? That's fine. Um, so, first of all, we've got to find true TDC on the... So that's the... just... Um, that's well on the spark plug, isn't it? It is indeed. So that's a nice yep. little contraption. So this that. is our little contraption for finding that. So obviously, with this one, not like the Cozzies where you've got the spark plug directly over the... Yeah. Um, it's a bit bit more difficult to find it so this here because it's all nice and rigid you can put it in at an angle and if we wind this round up you can see where it stops and then comes back that little stopping dwell there is where the piston is up the top and you can see the crank still moves while the piston doesn't so the idea of this is to find out the center of that dwell so what right. we do mate is find out first of all where the piston stops and you can see there it's just over 80 so we want to bring it back anywhere before that not too far and just find a mark so we'll go with 65 okay right and then what we'll do is put this marker on top dead center there and then we know now when the when we turn it and the, the gauge goes up to the stopping point and back to 65, we know that however much that's moved on this dial here, half that, and that is your true TDC. So right. we'll keep going through. That varies very slowly. Okay. And we have moved 12 degrees. So we know that six degrees, we move that to six. Trying to tame an octopus, this. We know that six degrees there is true TDC. So when we take it back now and go stop that there, that's true top dead center of the crank. Okay? Right. So we can wind that out now. Yeah. And the next thing we've got to do is turn this crank 108 degrees, okay, because that's the cam we're using. And we know then that the center of the dwell on the cam, so we've got after TDC, will be the inlet, okay. So we move this around to 108 degrees. So the next thing we've got to do is obviously find the center dwell of the cam lobe, all right? And that right. needs to be, the center of that needs to be 108 degrees of the crank. So we set our DTI up on top of the spring, nice and easy on this to set up, as opposed to something like the Cosworth. So what we do is we make sure that all these bolts on the poly are slack, except for one, okay? Remembering right. which one we're going to use. Yeah. Then what we do is you go, you see, what you see there where it stops and then goes yeah. back. So we need to find the center of that dwell. So if we go back and then find just a stopping point just before the dwell, so we'll go for 30, okay? And see where we are on here. So we're 108 degrees, yeah? Well, that's where right, it needs yep. to be. So if we turn that through, now, so it goes back to 30 on the dial gauge. Okay, and see where we are on here. We have now moved 20. Okay, so that means that at the moment that cam wheel is set so it's 118 degrees. Right. So what we do, if we slacken the bolt that we tightened, go back then forward to just 10 degrees there. Nip that back up. Now if we go back with the crank, 
up to 30 again. And we are pretty much 98 degrees. And if we go back to 30 there, we are 118, so it means half that so is 108. Yeah, the middle of that, bang on. Bang on, mate. Ideal. So that is... That's confusing, but it's all, I, I get what you're doing. It's, so that is done. And because yeah. it's the same cam, we haven't got twin cam, that's the only one we can do. Yeah. So it's pretty much done, mate. Ideal. There we go. So we've tightened all these up now, mate, and you can see if basically the cent if that bolt was right in the centre of that hole, that means that a standard pulley, pulley would have probably been bang on. Right. But the amount that it's sort of offset of the hole, that generally means that that's how much you've had to move it off the centre line to get it correct. So you'd probably find that this would be with a standard pulley, it'd probably be about 105 degrees, something like that, which right, obviously okay. for the cam ain't right. Hence having to yeah. have a further. So this is all because it's a different cam. And yeah, it's, so it's, obviously well, depending what cam you have, um, they time at different things. So that's why right, you have yeah. one of these to set what the cam should be timed at. Otherwise you're running them too advanced or yeah, retarded. Yeah. So this being a mild cam, is 108 degrees maybe it may be what a standard cam is but you can see that they vary yeah all through the range so it's very important you have one of these so there we go mate tight tighten all them up job done cool get the sump on now <laughs> 